Hi, my name's Richard Duffy. I am the SAP Business One subject matter expert here at OneSource, which is the America's SAP user group community for SAP Business One. What I'd like to do in this presentation is give you a little bit of an overview of SAP Business One. Now, who is this overview designed for? Well, fundamentally, it's designed for people who uh, have come into an organization that is already using SAP Business One. So you might not necessarily have been part of the selection team for SAP Business One. You've come into the organization, you've sat down and somebody said to you, well, this is SAP Business One. It's the software that we use inside our organization. It's our accounting software or it's our ERP or enterprise resource planning. And you might be thinking, well, I've never heard of SAP Business One before, or you know, I've heard about it, but I'd like a little bit more of a overview of exactly what the software is all about. So that's what I'm going to do in this presentation. I'm going to give you that overview. And what we're going to do is we're going to use an overview that SAP partners will traditionally use when they are introducing the SAP Business One solution to a potential customer for the very first time. So I'm going to use that presentation as the basis for this, but I'm going to go into a couple of more specific areas uh, that is based on the fact that you are already running SAP Business One. So let's get started. What I'd like to do is just quickly kick off with a short video which will give you a little bit of a promotional overview of SAP Business One from SAP's perspective. So your business is growing, which is good, except it means you've got to change the way things work. See, when you are small, your people could talk to each other directly, exchange information, whatever. But these days, things are not so simple. Your company's bigger, there's more people, they're working remotely or in new locations, and you need to tie them all together. And to make matters worse, all these random spreadsheets and databases you use to run the business don't talk to each other at all. All of this keeps your business from getting to the next level. You need to expand to new product lines, new markets, new suppliers. But since you're drowning in details as it is, there's no way you could pull it off. But what if you could ditch the insanity and get visibility and complete control of your business back, both now and for the future? Well, that's exactly the idea behind Business One from SAP. It's a complete, integrated solution designed exactly for small businesses. It gives complete visibility and control over all facets of your organization at an affordable price. No more one-size-fits-all solutions. Business One is easy to customize to suit your specific needs without needing a huge IT department. So your people can stay connected just like the old days and everyone gets the info they need, whether they're across the hall or across the globe. And as your needs change, so can the tools you use to manage them. Best of all, Business One gives you business value that you can see and measure. Your people become more productive, your processes are streamlined, your decisions become more strategic. Put simply, you're smarter, faster, more efficient, and more responsive. Which means less headaches for you and more money in the bank. Learn more today at sap.com slash business one. So you don't have to go and visit that website to learn more about SAP Business One because that's exactly what ASUG One Source is here to help you do, to learn a little bit more about SAP Business One. So potentially your organization was experiencing some of those challenges that were outlined in that video. Now you might also think, well hang on, we're not a small business. So again, bear in mind that what companies like SAP have to do is they have to um, take the different products in their portfolio and try and position them into different areas of the market so that at least when you're coming uh, to SAP, no idea of the different choices of solutions that the company has. And SAP to a certain extent have no idea about your business and your specific requirements at that point. They have to have a basic way of, of looking at different organizations um, and a basic way of positioning the different products to different organizations. But the interesting thing about SAP Business One is I know of organizations with a single user running SAP Business One, and I know multinational organizations with hundreds of users all around the world who run their business on SAP Business One. So remember, that's a guideline. 
So let's talk a little bit about the basic reasons why people would want to deploy an enterprise resource planning solution. And it's really about helping you manage change because business is constantly changing. I think it's fair to say whether we like it or not, the market, our customers, our suppliers, uh, there's so many different things are driving change in an organization. A couple of the key areas where you can expect to see change now if you're not already seeing it is this push to go more digital, to take more advantage of all these new technologies that are becoming available, and we'll talk about those. The second area is that the business is potentially growing. So you might be a fast growing company uh, and your needs um, have really outpaced what you had already in place. So you need to be able to have a system that allows you to put best practice processes in place. And that again is potentially one of the reasons why your company chose SAP Business One. Potentially you're like that larger organization I was talking about that had hundreds of users all around the world. So you're expanding and you need to be able to put in place uh, a single system that helps you manage all of that. And potentially that's the reason why your organization may have chosen SAP Business One. But whichever one of these areas is, is applicable to you, I think it's fair to say that this is the areas that an enterprise resource planning or an ERP system really helps you manage. Now you might have come from another organization or you know you might be familiar with accounting software which is what you know a lot of small and mid-sized businesses used in the past maybe a QuickBooks or a Xero or a package like that. ERP is really the next step up that allows you to do all of the basics that an accounting software package does but it does even more. Now I apologize if occasionally I get a little bit salesy in this presentation. I've spent 13 years of my life working at SAP uh, as the SAP Business One product evangelist. Um, and part of the reason why I spent 13 years of my life there and have continued to work with SAP Business One after leaving SAP is because I really believe that the product uh, has a role to fulfill in the organizations that buy it. And I get quite excited because I get to see a lot of organizations that have deployed the solution and the benefit it's driven for them. So if I do get a little bit enthusiastic and a little bit salesy, I do apologize. I'll try and moderate that as much as I can. So if you think about it, when you have an enterprise resource planning solution, uh, what it's really about, it's about helping you being able to focus on running your business. It's about helping you drive a competitive advantage connect all the different business functions and have easy access to data. All those points that were talked about in the video that you just saw. And this is about helping you, you know, become relevant in the global economy or even in the national economy or even your local economy, giving you robust business processes that, that are pre-built into the software. And these allow you to adapt to market changes and, and help you not only anticipate business trends, but react to them uh, and, is it possible to react proactively? I guess it is. You can you can address those proactively. Um, those business functions again, and you'll see this when we drill down a little bit more detail into SAP Business One. There's a huge number of business functions that come embedded inside SAP Business One. So these business functions are there, and it helps you helps your organization drive those cross-functional collaboration processes that naturally occur inside any business. And then it also gives you easy access to data. And hopefully you'll see that as we get in and we take a look at some of the more advanced features in SAP Business One. In particular, if you're lucky enough and your organization has deployed SAP Business One version for SAP HANA, I'm gonna explain what all that is and what it means, um, but you'll have access to a whole new level of analytics and data visibility. So these are the things that you wanna focus on in your business and this is what SAP Business One is gonna help you do. Now, you might be watching this and going, hang on, I've been using SAP Business One and I don't think I'm getting any of those things out of my solution. Well, that's not an uncommon scenario with ERP solutions for people to deploy something and really not be getting the maximum value from it. Now, the first person you need to go and speak to about that, of course, is your SAP Business One partner. 
But one of the things that we're trying to do at ASUG is provide for you additional resources, training, learning, videos, all kinds of different information that's gonna help you get that additional value. But remember, step one, speak to your partner. Step two, have a look at the content on ASUG and make sure that you take advantage of all the things that go hand in hand with being an ASUG member. So then if you think about it, one of the things that businesses are talking about nowadays is this concept of digital transformation. And digital transformation is taking advantage of these new technologies to help you drive better engagement with customers, to drive better engagement. Again, we could almost go back to this previous slide. It's about taking um, these digital technologies and using them to help you address all of these three key areas, but also looking more externally outside in, in the rest of the organization. But in order for you to be able to drive that digital transformation, you have to have what's called a digital core. And that's really the new way of describing an ERP solution inside the organization. If you don't have a good handle on all these core functions like your management and your admin, your purchasing, your sales and service, managing your projects, handling your inventory and distribution, and of course your accounting and financials, then it's really gonna be difficult for you to go out and take advantage of digital transformation and some of these new technologies because a lot of them assume that this piece is already done and that's what business one is there to help you do it's to, there to help you manage all those different areas now there's a couple of enablers that are required to do this digital transformation you have to have strong analytical capability so you've got all that data that's being put into the computer maybe that's your job is you get to sit uh, and you work with customers or suppliers and you get to put transactions into the system. Well, that all those transactions are basically providing you with data that you can then use to do analytics, all right? And what analytics help you to do is get uh, a better picture of what's going on inside the organization and make better decisions. Now, as the business grows, you get more and more of that data going in. And that data is not just coming from your own system, but it's also coming from external locations. So you've now got this massive amount of data that you want to manage. That's what big data is all about. Cloud technologies, again, just about every organization today or every person in some way, shape or form is using the cloud, whether it's something as simple as running, you know, iTunes um, or you're using um, Outlook.com uh, or you're using Gmail or something like that. That's cloud technology. Well, you might also be lucky enough to be using SAP Business One running in the cloud. So cloud technologies are here to stay and, and these cloud technologies is not just about where your data sits and whether or not it's in the data center or whatever the case may be. It's also about the new ways that applications can talk to one another. So that's another key component that you have to have in your business to, to really enable this digital transformation. And then of course, mobile technologies. I think it's fair to say that just about everybody now has some kind of handheld mobile device, whether it's an Android device, whether it's an iOS device, whether it's an iPad or a tablet, whatever. We've got these mobile technologies in our businesses. The challenge is to take advantage of it. And the good news for you as an SAP Business One user is that SAP Business One has all those mobile technologies today. And then you've got the additional, if you like, let's call them the buzzwords. These are the things that you may or may not have heard about before but gets marketing people at, uh, at IT companies really excited because it you know, helps them potentially try and sell you new things, but you know, they can't sell you something if it doesn't solve a problem. So you know, whilst they're buzzwords, they're really designed to help you solve problems. And these, these are things like the internet of things, having different devices, you know, even the devices inside your, your organization from thermostats that can ma manage your um, office air conditioning, through to what's um, deployed inside your warehouse, you know, the mobile devices, if you're lucky enough to be using them, that help your team do the picking and packing. You know, all of these things, when they're all connected together using the internet, this is what's referred to as the internet of things. And there's advances in machine learning, where you're able to use these bots 
that can help you do your job and you're gonna see some of these over time coming for SAP Business One. And these are driven by machine learning where the information technology can watch what you, not necessarily watch in a creepy sense, but, but watch what you're doing and automatically adapt uh, and change to meet your requirements. And then innovations like um, blockchain. And I'm not gonna get into a discussion about what blockchain is. If you'd like to know more about blockchain, if you'd like me to put together and deliver a presentation on blockchain, I'm more than happy to do so. Just jump onto the Q&A area on um, ASUG OneSource and let me know you'd like that and I'll put something together for you. But these technologies are all designed to give your company the ability to change, um, change rapidly and in response to all those different things that, that are you know, impacting on the business, whether it's regulation, whether it's competitive forces, whether it's customer demand. Um, and you can then adapt and change your business models and create new products and services in this new digital economy because that's where there's an opportunity to, um, if you like, differentiate your organization. It's not necessarily about the product you sell, but it can be about the way you sell the product, the way you engage with your customers, all right? So that's kind of what this whole digital business is about and those are the things that you need to have in place um, it, for you to really take part in it. And the good news is your SAP Business One system gives you that digital core that enables you to do all of these things. So if you think about it, SAP Business One with all of those functions in some way, shape or form in each of those different areas of functionality takes advantage of all of these different um, these different enablers and, and provides information that can be fed through uh, and integrated with all these different enablers. So your business is in a really good position right now to be able to take that next step. And when you're ready, take advantage of all these different areas. Hopefully that makes sense. So then not only do you have the digital core that's inside SAP Business One, there are other components to the SAP Business One solution that your organization may or may not necessarily be using. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that because these are some of the things that also um, encourage companies like yours to make that decision to, to purchase and deploy SAP Business One. So the first point to be aware of, and, and again, sometimes it's good to go back and review these things that you might have forgotten about since you actually bought the solution, but SAP Business One is now used in more than 170 countries around the world with 44 localizations. All right, so this is where SAP Business One has been specifically tailored to meet the local legal requirements of these um, countries and even things like the European Union now where you have what's called GDPR which is a new way uh, a new set of regulations around you manage people's personal data we've got sessions on that on one source that you can go and review but that capability is inside your SAP business one solution if you're um, up to date with the uh, with the current version so all those different countries, you have the ability to deploy Business One and handle all of their local legal requirements. Not only that, 28 different languages Business One is available in. So even if you have people inside your organization who would like to see the Business One user interface, depending on your version, and that's an important point to note, some of these things, if you're running on an older version of SAP Business One, you might not be able to do. But the secret to that is make sure you're on the latest version as soon as possible and you'll be able to take advantage of all these things that I'm talking about. Um, but it, you know, you can have different people with different um, languages in their user interface. They all put the data in in English, of course, um, unless potentially you might um, have the data being put in in Spanish or whatever the case may be, um, if that's your native language. But um, you know, in this particular scenario, you can have the data all going in in English, but all the screens, the help files, and everything like that coming out in any one of these 28 different languages, which is a pretty powerful, and there's very few enterprise resource planning products on the market that give you that capability. So, also, what SAP Business One does, if you think about it, 
when we talk about being a digital core and taking part in this digital transformation, that digital core has to be able to not only talk to SAP solutions, but it has to talk to other solutions. So that's what integration is all about. And SAP Business One offers you four different integration products that are either a standard part of the SAP Business One solution, or they are additional things that can be done utilizing these integration tools. So your standard integration scenarios, your dashboards, the mobile apps that we were talking about, you know, automated requests for quotations, um, integrating with trading networks like Ariba, um, integrating with uh, expense management solutions like Concur. Then you've got other things like your subsidiary integration. If you've got different, in, uh, different offices all talking to one another, you can have the ability to share data between those offices. So when you make a change in one office, that seamlessly flows out to all the other offices or only flows to the offices that need it. So that subsidiary integration is really, really important. So Business One gives you all of that capability from Business One solution to Business One solution, but also from Business One to the bigger SAP product, the SAP Business Suite. All right, which you may be running in if you're part of a large multinational. Um, they're part of the solution, what we call a solution stack that your company might be using in the bigger organization. Third area, you know, things that you can build or your partner can build for you, integrating with non-SAP solutions, deploying cloud-based extensions, you know, in, in integrating with your website, which might be built on top of WooCommerce or or Shopify, uh, integrating with point of sale solutions like Square. All of these things are available. And then of course, there's an, another area, intercompany integration. So if you, uh, you might have multiple companies and those multiple companies have to share information backwards and forwards. So there are intercompany integration solutions available for SAP Business One as well that enable that to happen. So you've got all those integration components. Then there's industry specific solutions that are available. And you might be using some of these already um, as well as horizontal extensions. So what's the difference? An industry solution is really got specific functionality that's designed to meet the needs of a particular industry. So you might be, for example, in food manufacturing. Okay, so you have to do recipe management. You have to do um, HACCP. Um, you have to manage HACCP compliance. You have to look after all the specific things about your industry and that's not ev something that every business needs to do. So you need that specific functionality that's available um, as an additional component for SAP Business One. Potentially you might be using one of these already today. Then you've got these horizontal extensions which um, take what's in the core of SAP Business One and give you additional functionality around accounting, um, enhancing the CRM capabilities, your payment processing, giving you more mobility capabilities, giving you additional reporting capabilities. Now, SAP Business One, there's more, more than 70,000 organizations around the world using the software today. So there's a lot of these different extensions available out there. Um, and this is one of the advantages. And one of the things that we also try and do with ASUG OneSource is to help make you aware of what these different choices are. So again, make sure you're taking advantage of those resources that we're providing for you. Then the deployment options. You could potentially today be running SAP Business One where you've got a server in your office and you've all got the Business One software installed on your computers and, 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 and everything's great. Um, but then you can also deploy SAP Business One in the cloud where all you have is a very simple computer and the SAP Business One server and all the data is stored in a data center um, which is managed by a partner. This is actually, as well as me being part of um, the ASUG team, um, this is what I actually do in my other business. We are a cloud provider uh, ourselves and we host SAP Business One uh, for companies just like you who want to have their SAP Business One in the cloud and not have to manage it all and not have to worry about hardware upgrades and software upgrades and all those different things. So Business One gives you these two different deployment options. And you can see there's a number of benefits that apply to each one of these. I'm not going to read them all out one by one because you can 
I'm sure you can read them for yourself. And if you've got questions about what any of these things mean, again, remember the ASUG Q&A uh, is a great place to go and ask those questions, or you can reach out to me directly. All right, and I'll give you my details at the end of this presentation. And then you've got the additional applications. So now we're starting to talk now a little bit more about SAP HANA. Every ERP solution has to store its data somewhere and that uses a database platform to do that, a database server. SAP Business One is no different. Now there are two databases that SAP work with. SQL Server, which comes from Microsoft, and then SAP HANA, which is built by SAP themselves. So a lot of the time we're going to be talking about some of the things that are part of SAP HANA. So, you know, you have to look at does my company use SAP Business One on SQL or does it use SAP Business One on HANA? So I'm going to try and point out where these things kind of diverge a little bit. So when you're running HANA, HANA is not only a database, but it's also a development platform that SAP and partners, potentially like your partner who's deployed your Business One solution and is supporting you um, with your Business One deployment, your partner might have even built some of these applications. But functionality like enterprise search, cash flow forecasting, what's called ava uh, advanced available to promise, delivery schedule management, you can see the others here, you know, intelligent forecasting and sales recommendations. All these things take advantage of the additional power of SAP HANA. Now, there are videos which explain and show you how each one of these things work as well. So I'm not going to try and you know boil the ocean and 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 try and show you all these things at once. Purp my purpose today is just to give you this overview um, and hopefully whet your appetite and and pique your interest in going out and finding out more about these different solutions. But we're trying to um, over time build a complete library where we can show you how each one of these things work. And again, not to repeat myself, but I'm going to, if you can't find what you're looking for, ask the question on the ASUG One Source Q&A. And then of course you've got the analytics, that analytics capability which is not only available in the standard reporting that you have with all the Business One versions, you know, that comes with hundreds and hundreds of standard reports out of the box. You can push data out to Microsoft Excel and do analysis there, but you also have additional functionality that allows you to do even greater um, querying and visualizing the data, um, getting your key performance indicators automatically presented to you in a cockpit. And you'll see this in some of the demos. So, you know, SAP HANA gives you even more capability around this, but many of these, these things, many of these standard features and functions are available for you if you're running on SAP uh, Business One sitting on top of the Microsoft SQL Server database. And guess what? Remember I talked about those additional um, solutions that you could get as part of your SAP Business One total um, overall solution? Well, a lot of partners have built some of these kinds of things for, for Microsoft SQL Server. All right, so just because you're not on HANA doesn't mean you're excluded from these things. Okay, go and talk to your partner, they'll be able to point you in the right direction. Or of course, you might make the decision, now's the right time to move to HANA. Mobile applications available out of the box. You can go to the um, Google Play Store or the Apple Store and you can download mobile applications that will work with your SAP Business One system today. Assuming you're not on a, a really old version of SAP Business One, which probably you shouldn't be because it's not supported anymore but these mobile applications are available today and of course if you are on HANA I know I keep saying this and you might get sick of me saying it but again HANA provides more um, functionality that allows SAP to build more of these applications themselves but you know these applications are there you can get them and if you're licensed for SAP Business One you can start using them straight away Additional things that you need to be aware of with your SAP Business One solution. If you've been working with an ERP product before or even accounting software, you'll know that one of the most important things is managing the day-to-day the -day operations of the software. 
getting support, making sure the software is running correctly, making sure it's, it's optimized and it's running as fast as possible. Well, SAP have built some really unique technology that helps you to manage that. And there's a good chance you're already running it. If you're not, I suggest you speak to your partner. And this is the remote support platform, which allows you to do um, all kinds of different things. It allows you to automate your backups, automate your upgrades. It allows you, if you've got a problem, um, to share information with your partner or SAP. It even allows you to receive what are called um, health checks and, and fixes that SAP can build or your partner can build that will automatically run over your system without sharing your data with anybody, but we will check your system and tell you if there's a potential issue. All right, so the remote support platform is part of your SAP Business One deployment. You should be using it. Um, I use it every single day because guess what? Um, I'm an SAP customer as well, just like you. Uh, and I would, not, um, I would not give up the remote support platform for anything. It's, it's a really fantastic piece of, uh, piece of technology. So, you know, what SAP Business One is giving you, it's giving you the ability to start changing your business. And hopefully that journey has already started inside your organization. So what I didn't do right now is I would um, like to invite you to um, to join me. We're going to take a look at a quick overview of SAP Business One, just so you've got an understanding of how the software works and you've had a quick first look. And then um, we're going to come back and I'm going to give you some next steps.